Hello, welcome you all again to the lecture series in political theory. You know, I am Professor H. V. Kant. You remember my first series of lectures on Marxist political theory that I published on YouTube. Almost after a gap of one year, I am coming back with a new series that seeks to explain and interrogate liberal political theory. I'll be discussing various Western theories that were presented as alternative to liberalism. In this talk, I will talk about contemporary republicanism and focus on Philip Petit's ideas on liberty. Republicanism has a long tradition dating back to classical Greek and Roman traditions and later, later to the Renaissance and to the Protestant Revolution. Republican ideas focused on autonomy of politics from religion and emphasized on the law-governed polities. Democracy was not uh, its immediate focus at the initial stages of uh, republicanism. But republican ideas uh, that emerged in uh, 17th century went along with the idea of uh, democracy. However, democracy that the contemporary republicanism stands for is uh, different from a liberal democracy which emphasizes uh, on individual rights and liberties. Historical roots of republicanism is uh, found in the ideas of uh, Plato, Aristotle, Jane Bodin, Machiavelli, Oliver Cromwell, Richard Price, James Madison, etc. Contemporary versions of Republicanism are found in the writings of scholars like Quentin Skinner and Philip Pettit. The central focus of the New Republican is public interest, common good and the general welfare. Republicanism stands to the idea of a citizenship based on constitutional law and law governed institutions. Republicanism seeks a vision of politics that recognizes and strengthens the social bonds within the political community. It believes in the idea of uh, autonomous public interest that is independent of uh, the sum of uh, individual interests or even community interests. It believes in the idea of uh, civic virtue and political participation and calls our attention to the dangers of corruption, the benefits of a mixed constitution and the significance of the rule of law. The paramount of all republican virtues is the notion of political liberty, understood as non-domination or independence from arbitrary power. In this lecture, I will focus on Philip Petit, who gave us the most sophisticated version of neo-republicanism. 
Philip Pettit is uh, an Irish philosopher, political theorist, uh, and a well-known public intellectual. He studied in Ireland and became a lecturer, lecturer at a very young age at Dublin. Later, he was associated with uh, many academic institutions and universities uh, in different countries in the US, UK and Australia. Although he came from a, a traditional Catholic background, uh, in course of time he became a secular Republican. He was influenced initially by the ideas of uh, Jean Paul Sartre and later by Quentin Skinner, another Republican thinker. He was uh, the author of uh, several books, Republicanism, A Theory of Freedom and Government, A Political Philosophy in Public Life, Civic Republicanism in uh, Japeteros, Spain, and another book, Just Freedom, A Moral Compass for a Complex World. Petit's idea of liberty starts with uh, interrogation of uh, Isaiah Berlin's idea of liberty. Where Berlin spoke about two concepts of uh, liberty, negative liberty and positive liberty. By negative liberty, Berlin refers to the absence of obstacles or external constraints, which is essential to the exercise of individual freedom. In contrast, positive liberty refers to self-mastery, self-realization, where individual controls or chooses his own test, his or her own destiny. Berlin believed that of the two, negative liberty is uh, preferable to positive liberty. As he felt that the idea of positive liberty allows the state or the collective group to chip in and initiate development and welfare activities uh, in the name of uh, creating uh, self-realization and thus obstructing uh, the freedom of the individuals. Berlin believed that the idea of positive liberty gives birth to authoritarian re regimes that hinders the individuals acting the way that they want. Hence, Berlin preferred negative to positive liberty and identified uh, liberty with non-interference. By expressing his uh, preference to negative liberty, Berlin exemplifies, uh, in fact, the libertarian view of liberty as absence of uh, all restraints. And Berlin's idea or his uh, advocacy of uh, ne negative liberty is uh, supported by many who believe in a liberal, liberal idea of uh, freedom. Interrogating uh, Berlin's idea of liberty, Petit argues that the idea of freedom as non-interference is inadequate. He is again looking at uh, freedom only in market times, like the neoliberals. He asks, how do we say that man is a free person? In his talks, he gives the example of uh, Nora's character in uh, 
Isbun's play, A Doll House. In this, the heroine Nora, her husband was liberal and he allowed her to do almost everything that she liked. He was generous, he would be generous to her even if she did something that he abhors. Describing this relationship uh, between uh, Nora and her husband, uh, Petit asked Alaphans whether we think that Nora is free in true sense. Sure, many of us consider that Nora is fortunate and she is also free to do what she wants to do. But Petit says no. For freedom that Nora enjoys is pure luck. It depended on the generosity of the husband who is dominant though not interfering. Hmm? Will Nora be able to enjoy had her husband been otherwise? In a sense that what all Nora was able to enjoy was because of the luck factor of having that person as her husband. Perhaps she would not have enjoyed all this freedom to do had there been a different husband. Starting with Nora, Petit cites many examples from political domain to make a case for his idea of liberty. He discusses the relation that existed between uh, the American colonies and uh, the British crown. The crown was in a way very generous towards the colonies. Still, the Americans felt that they were not uh, free as they were dependent on the crown's mercy. It was that perception which led to the American revolutionaries to fight for independence. Here, Petit shows that non-interference can coexist with domination. Just because there is non-interference, it doesn't mean that there is no domination. But as long as there is someone, there is some power over us dominating, Petit says, there is no freedom in real sense. Even if that dominating power is, non, is not interfering in our affairs. Freedom involves emancipation from subordination and dependency. We are free when the other people are not entitled to interfere and dominate. It is possible that others don't really interfere, but they have the ability to dominate and that Fear always influence the way that we behave. In that sense, as long as that uh, possibility of domination exists, we cannot say that we are free. To pet it, the people's freedom can be protected when the condition of uh, domination ceases to exist. He argues that freedom is under threat because of different reasons. 
it is threatened when the minorities are under the domination of the majority community the minorities are always afraid that the majority may interfere and dominate though they may not actually dominate uh, i mean interfere but still that fear is there it is under threat when a powerful majority or the rich starts controlling and dictating the government when the government itself becomes the puppet of uh, the powerful and the rich then the people's freedom is at stake we don't have freedom when we are scared of uh, expressing our views against the governments and the powerful groups so it is not we are so scared of talking it is in that sense we are really not having the freedom hmm petit says that we can say that we have we are all free if we enjoy these conditions what are those condition a situation where minorities are protected against the will of the majority so the minorities it can be ethnic cultural political minority whatever it is they are protected from the will of the majority second protection of the government from the majorities or the rich even the government should be protected from the rich or the influential classes so the government should be powerful enough for eh? to withstand eh, the kind of pressure which the powerful exercise the third he says the right to contest and interrogate eh, the national governments and the powerful persons and groups that means you have freedom that means i have freedom when only i can contest you say something this is national interest this is development this is progress when i am able to contest and say no i don't believe it to be so if you have that environment where you can express your resentment or your difference with the governments or the most powerful people in the society then only you can say you are free so it is keeping this in mind uh, he says you we need to ensure that uh, the freedom exists in all domains first social domain okay where the people relate to one another so in society we have different kinds of people the dom uh, upper caste and lower caste hmm hindus and muslims tribals and non tribals how do we relate to one another as equals or not that matters a lot hmm so it is only when everyone all groups uh, have uh, uh, equal uh, status and no group is allowed to dominate the other then we have freedom the second he is in the political domain between the citizenry and the government where the citizenry citizens have, will have the right to criticize the government 
demand the government uh, to pay attention to their problems and not afraid of uh, uh, showing their faults if only the people are able to do that then there is freedom so also in the global domain you know the right to contest and interrogate national governments you know some of the governments uh, think they are so powerful us uh, uh, or such major powers they dominate small countries uh, because of their political military and economic strength in such situations we can say the others have freedom if only they are even if one is a small country and weak country it is able to say what it wants to say are not uh, uh, give up telling uh, something uh, out of uh, fear of uh, uh, repercussions uh, of uh, expressing the truths hmm? so it is in that sense uh, uh, so you need she says that there is a need for making necessary changes uh, at social political and even global levels in order to ensure that there is no domination so what is the way of knowing that there is no domination for that he prescribed three kinds of uh, tests the first test uh, he he calls it uh, eyeball test eyeball that means i am able to look at you straight and talk to you i am not the one who will uh, bow down look at your feet and talk i can strike look into you and speak to you whether it is woman dealing with man or lower caste dealing with upper caste blacks dealing with the whites or uh, uh, the muslims or christians dealing with the uh, majoritarian hindus in india you are able to look straight and talk if i am able to do that that is uh, what he calls the uh, eyeball test then i have freedom then there is another uh, test he says tough luck tough luck test it is in the political domain you know when state does many things it affects some it benefits some it doesn't benefit uh, some it happens uh, like that but the question is whether what the state did is in the in the good interest of the whole community or the people or whether it is done in the interest of a few you know in the luck uh, this one tough uh, tough luck test the people sometimes may be affected for example the middle we uh, the middle class employees or expected uh, or we pay lot of firm uh, taxes but when we pay tax we say okay we pay tax and that tax amount is uh, utilized in the interest of all it's okay it's okay where but though i have to pay it is uh, benefiting all so i don't mind huh so when i am able to voluntarily accept that huh but this then that is uh, the thing where you say it is not that forcibly i am uh, uh, compelled to accept it i voluntarily accept okay uh, my money will go for the benefit of uh, the other poor people or a benefit of uh, building up the infrastructure okay i don't mind giving then reservations for example okay 
uh, I reservations. Uh, I may not get reservations because uh, I belong to the upper caste. Uh, but okay, it is uh, the people support so much. Uh, so let them give uh, some kind of uh, accommodation. I don't. We don't need to get bothered about it. So it is. It's. It is a luck that I am not born. But I do accept that when that comes voluntarily. Eh, voluntarily and not because of compulsion hmm? then that's uh, well, well, me, the means that there is a freedom right? though it may not benefit uh, I still accept it voluntarily okay then the other one is in the global domain nah? that is strike talking he says strike talking okay? where even a small country will have the right to speak without fear, without uh, fear of any kind of repercussions uh, from the most uh, powerful communities. So if uh, the powerful uh, nations are doing damage, if a small country is able to say, no, what you are doing is wrong. You are dumping your goods into that. You are forcing uh, us to open our markets but not giving your markets to us or your idea of uh, fight against terrorism uh, is uh, uh, not beneficial to us if a small country is able to say that then there is a freedom if you can't that is strike talking heart to heart you may be rich you may be powerful but if I am able to talk, then there is, eh, you can say, there is freedom. Hmm? So these are very important tests to say whether there is, uh, uh, one really enjoys uh, freedom in the sense of uh, non-domination. Where will the people be able to enjoy this kind of freedom? According to Philip Petit, the idea of freedom as non-domination in real life is possible only in Republican states where all the members enjoy equal citizenship. Petit is no liberal. He does not view interference per se as uh, absence of freedom or as domination. To him, there is no such thing as natural freedom. Freedom exists only in law. Law creates and enables the people to enjoy rights and freedoms. Law need not always be coercive. Properly constituted law, according to him, is constitutive of liberty. That means it is the condition for liberty. Law defines the authority of the rulers and also the rights of the citizens. Good law relieve people from domination and protect them from arbitrary arbitrary interference from the rich and the powerful. He looks at the people as the truster and the state as a trustee. The people trust the state that ensures non-arbitrary rule. These are the ideas very different from both liberal individualism and communitarianism which we discussed in other lectures. Petit's idea of liberty in a way gives a peep into neo-republicanism which looks beyond the concerns of uh, particular individuals and communities. It emphasizes on the 
need to build law based institutions and advocate ideas that make it compatible with the interests of uh, all political subjects far from looking at the state as an evil neo republicanism considers that it is possible to make the state a guarantor of freedom by eliminating all conditions of domination within the society i leave it to you whether you accept neo republicanism in general or the ideas of uh, philip petit in particular if you have anything to say write to your views in the comments box i will be speaking to you about uh, many other traditions and theoreticians in political theory if you like my talks subscribe to this channel and inform others about it good bye for now and meet you with a new topic soon thank you